What is up guys? This is Riley from Hudson Motors. On today's episode, we are going over Chevy square body trucks. And we're going over all the good, all the bad, all the pros and cons on these trucks and whether or not you should buy one. And in my opinion, these trucks are the perfect starter classic if you have never owned a classic before. We are with our 1986 Chevy Suburban. So it's still square body, but it's square body Suburban. This truck is our current giveaway truck. If you don't know, here at Hudson Motors, we buy and restore and give away cool classic trucks like this one here. But the chances are you're probably watching this video after that giveaway is closed. Check us out on our website, hotsimmotors.com to see what else we're giving away. We're always giving away something cool. Check that out as well. So let's hop in and talk about all the nitty gritty, all the good and bad. But let's start with the good because there is a ton of good when it comes to square body trucks. So square body trucks, they're called square bodies because they are very, very, very square. These are the longest running GM truck that GM had produced. They started in 1973 and ended in 1988 for pickups, but for Suburbans and Blazers carried all the way into 1991. Uh, this is a huge pro you have this massive run of a vehicle because that means that there is plenty of inventory to choose from if you're looking to get into one of these bad boys there's no reason why you have to go out and find a 1973 that's rusted and it's the best one that you've been able to find and, and you're kind of settling you can look and hunt and find the perfect square body chevy in original factory condition still and just find something that has no rust or no issues and just hop right into a good classic because you have all these all these years especially going all the way into the 90s uh, you got a little bit more modern tech as well. If you want something with a little more comfort, a little more, you know, creature comforts in them, you can go all the way into the late, into the early 90s trucks as well. So that's a huge plus that you have all this to choose from. It also means that there's a lot of trucks in junkyard that if you do buy a truck and you need parts uh, and you want original parts, you can go out to the junkyard and pick something out and, uh, and save money that way. So there's going to be trucks at the junkyard and there's going to be plenty to find on Facebook Marketplace and plenty to find on Craigslist. So you'll be able to find the truck that that you want now because the truck was made for so long that also means that there's a ton of aftermarket support for these trucks there is so many companies out there who produce new parts for these trucks custom parts for these trucks swap parts interior parts like you want to put in tmi bucket seats they make a bracket that bolts right in so because of that you don't have to be a fabricator if this is your first classic truck and you want to make it your own and make it custom you don't have to be a fabricator there is so much available out there for you to choose from that you can purchase off the shelf and you can bolt on in your garage at home so that is a humongous plus when you're dealing with square body chevys you can make it your own and you don't have to be you know a super talented fabricator in order to do it and let's say you have a truck that's passed down to you from like your grandpa and it's got sentimental value to you but it's been but it's rusted out there's every single patch panel and reproduction panel available even reproduction cabs are available for these trucks so that if you have a truck that's sentimental to you and you want to restore it and you don't want to go out and buy another truck uh, you can fix the rust that's on your grandpa's truck or whatever because there is just so much available out there for you so that's just a massive plus to be able to consistently fix your vehicle and make it your own and make it better because of that now with all those different years came a ton of different iterations and i think this is another plus so here's what we'll start talking about this truck in specific so this is the quad headlight maybe the most popular square body truck is the mid 80s quad headlight design uh, so this is an 86 suburban in all these different years starting 73 73 all the way up to 88 and 91 you had different grills different trim different paint schemes different bumpers a ton of different options that you could then go in and I say this because I'm not a purist at all. I don't care. I think people should take a square body and say, oh, I loved the 73 grill, but I liked, you know, the trim package that came in 88 or whatever you want to do and just mix and match and make it your own truck, which is really cool because all those parts will interchange fairly easily. You might have to change out a core support, but companies like Automatal Direct, they make all the different core supports. And so you can go swap them over in a, in a weekend and stuff like that. So you can get custom and change things up. I love this grill. I think this grill is really cool because they always had the paint match center in the middle here. Uh, we painted this in a new modern desert metallic sand so we, and then we have this center stripe painted to match so it's really cool but i love this this grill option but you could change and swap and do whatever to make it your own your own truck different emblems all sorts of different fun things to do to make it your own another great thing about these and i make a big deal about making these trucks your own and them being unique is that's what's fun about classic trucks versus classic cars is that in a truck you can change so many different things to make it unique and make it your own vehicle it really is a lot of fun um, and so one of the great parts about this truck is that about square body chevys in general is that there are so many different iterations you know you had short beds long beds single cabs crew cabs suburbans blazers 3500s dualies there was just such a, a wide array of different iterations of the square body that you really can't pick and choose what you like uh, i think it's way cool to have a suburban because you get a crew cab but then you get that 
it's not quite as long as like driving a crew cab long bed. It's actually shorter than even a crew cab short bed, but you still get four doors. So you still haul a bunch of people. And uh, as long as you don't need a big empty open bed, you can get away with it. So I love the Suburban configuration, uh, but you know, if you wanted a little sport truck, you could buy a short bed single cab and, and it could be lowered and all sorts of different stuff. So there's a lot of fun to be had with all the different iterations uh, that were available. Uh, but you had different axle weights and different engine sizes. And so in, when it comes to engine sizes, there, there were a plethora of different options, 350s, inline sixes, uh, big block V8s, uh, like 454s. You can get these things in a diesel. There's just a ton of different options. And if you do end up getting one that is the most common iteration, which would be the 350 V8 with a turbo 400 transmission, that's a very reliable, even if it's still from the 80s, that is still a very, very, very reliable um, drivetrain. They're just, they just ran forever in those iterations. And so you probably pick one of those up and still drive it every day while you're still working on it, while you're still doing fun things to it. So that's a great thing as well for somebody who's getting into a classic truck for the first time is like, hey, I picked up one with a 350 and a three speed, but it still ran and drove excellently, even though it's still carbureted, it doesn't matter. You can still go out and have fun and continue to make it nicer and make it cooler and make it more fun to be in. And then as you build up your confidence, you do bigger and better and cooler things to it. And that's, that's I think what freaks people out with classics a lot of times is, is they don't know how to keep them running. But if you have a classic that stays running pretty much all the time and parts are so readily available for like a 350 at your local parts store, you can keep them running and just keep driving them and having a good time because they're so full of character. And then you build up your confidence to just keep going and, and keep adding and keep doing more fun stuff to them. Some other great things, great options that you might find. You might find a truck with a 700 R4, which might not be the strongest transmission in the world, but it'll have overdrive in. And uh, a lot of people like, they won't buy a classic because they don't they can't drive it on the freeway and they have to commute. Well, if you buy some of the 700 R4, you can always get on the freeway and do freeway speeds. Um, but another huge, huge, huge plus in buying a square body Chevy is they are by far the easiest vehicles on planet Earth to LS swap. And you know, if you have a truck that came with the 350, you can LS swap it very easily. Every swap part is available from, from radiators to anything that you might need. And they'll pretty much bolt in with no fabrication required. So some people might scoff and say, oh, an LS swap is boring. No, an LS swap is great. They make good power and they are very easy to do and they're very reliable. And so again, if you're a first time classic truck owner and you bought this truck and it's got a 350 and it runs good and you've driven it for a few years and then you're like, you know what? I've built up my courage. I've done a bunch of fun stuff to my truck. I want to go ahead and LS swap it. You'll be able to, I swear. You'll be able to, you'll take your time. It might take you a few months, but you definitely could LS swap a square body Chevy in your garage. Last thing, and this is my own personal, you know, honorary mention for the pros of a square body ownership is that when you're doing a square body, all of your weather stripping from your belt lines to the weather stripping around your doors, it all goes on with clips. If you've ever owned another classic that you have to glue on your weather stripping, it absolutely sucks. Nobody likes gluing on their weather stripping. This is all clip held on. And so that's a huge pro for me. Something you guys should be aware of. Uh, weather stripping is something that makes your truck feel like garbage if it sucks. Uh, and then when you have fresh weather stripping, it makes your truck feel really nice. And so they're really easy to do. So I have to say that's my honorable mention. So that's a lot of pros. There's a lot of good stuff about these trucks. Uh, we could keep going. There's, there's plenty to talk about, but as somebody, you know, if you're looking into buying one of those things, those are some things that you should be aware of. Those are some really good things that I can say about square bodies. Let's talk about some of the negatives. Some of the negatives are a little more specific. So let's, uh, let's hop into those. So first things first, when, it when we talk about the negatives, let's pop the hood. You can see under the hood, it's a little wet. We just washed the truck, but uh, you'll see under the hood that we've got a 12 valve Cummins under the hood of our Suburban, uh, which I love and the truck drives great. And it's awesome to have a 12 valve. But if you're a diesel guy, uh, and you're looking to buy a square body Chevy with a diesel from the factory, the only available option was the 6.2, which really was a terrible diesel engine. They were not strong. They did not make good power. They were not reliable. Um, they couldn't handle any aftermarket boost really. Like a 6990i from a, from a Ford could handle a little bit of boost from the factory. And uh, it just seems like those 6.2s couldn't do it. So I think that's one of the negatives that if you're into diesel trucks, you're not gonna have good luck just straight out the factory with a 6.2. You're much better off doing a 454 if you want some big pulling power or just running the 350 um, over the 62. However, with that being said, I am not alone in this opinion of mine. There is a whole Facebook group dedicated to come and swapping their square body Chevys. It is called GM Square Body Come and Swap on Facebook. Get on that group. That is actually where I found this truck. I found this truck on that Facebook group for sale and then I bought it. So putting a 12 valve or any other type of Cummins in your square body is gonna make it way better than a 6.2 if you like diesels. So that's just one con is that there's not a lot of diesel support out there for these trucks. You gotta go out and do a swap like this. But again, check out that Facebook group if you want. Another con when you're talking about square body Chevys, especially four wheel drive trucks, is that their frames were quite narrow and pretty weak. 
And so this frame has been reinforced with its new steering box and everything that's underneath there. And so there is no frame flex or anything like that, but it tended to be that in these in four wheel drive GM trucks that uh, they were pretty stinking weak. Um, however, I will say that that's something to look for. If you're looking at a four wheel drive square body is look at the frame at the steering box and see, are there any signs of cracking on that frame there? Has it been reinforced? Something to keep keep your eye on, especially if they're running big tires, it will put a lot of stress, stress on that frame at this where the steering box is bolted in. So make sure that it's not cracking or anything there. That's just something to keep an eye out for. So let's talk about axles for a minute, because this is one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest cons when it came to square bodies is that in the three quarter one ton trucks in the rear axle, you got a 14 bolt rear, which was a plenty stronger axle, but the front axles were quite weak in all their front, in all their four wheel drive trucks. Uh, they came with either a GM 10 bolt or 12 bolt, which were really just weak axles. Uh, a Dana 44 in the half tons and a Dana 60 in the three quarter and one tons would have been a far better option for GM to use. So those axles, you know, they are they are a weak point and they are a con of the builds. Uh, this truck has a Dana 60 swapped in. This is actually a Snowfighter Dana 60, so a really nice heavy duty Dana 60 front axle. Again, a huge plus over that. Uh, but something that you guys need to be aware of when you're looking at these trucks, if you're looking at four wheel drive trucks, is, is those. GM front axles were not the best axles that are out there. So just something else to keep in mind. Now onto what might be the biggest con for me when it comes to square body Chevys is I believe that this is when engineers really started their hatred for mechanics and people who are gonna be working on their trucks. It seems as though square body Chevys are when trucks started to get complicated in the way things were put together. And what I mean by that is is everything you have to take apart in these trucks is a process. N nothing just kind of comes off and is a couple bolts here and there and you put it back together, you know, happily and easily. Everything here is like a step-by-step -step sequence, order of operations to put things together from the dash to the gauge bezel, to the steering column, to the door panels. The grills are a nightmare. So all these things, they require so many extra steps to put together and, and it's, they're pretty complicated. I wouldn't say that it's hard. It's just a nuisance because you'll get your door panel 95% of the way done and you'll forget a clip or a screw somewhere. And you have to go and backtrack all the way back down to where you forgot um, and put it back together the proper way. Now, you might think I'm whining about this, but you know, this might be my third or fourth or fifth square body truck that we've done and I'm still not used to it. I'm still not used to like, oh crap, I forgot, you know, this part has to go on first before this part can go on. And, and you're just trying to assemble a door panel, you know? So I believe that this is when the, the engineers really started to have a little more leeway at these, at these companies to, to start producing stuff like this. The fit and finish is good, I will say, but it, it is kind of a nuisance. Yeah, especially if you forget something and then you're like, oh man, I, I had something go wrong behind my gauge bezel. I have to go ahead and take my whole gauge bezel apart. And it's like an 18 step process to take it apart and put it back together. So that's a huge con for me. Something that, that just has always bothered me about these trucks. It's really not the end of the world. It's just something to be aware of. Again, that, that when you're doing these things, now luckily there's a lot of YouTube material out there on square body trucks to how to take apart a bezel, uh, your gauge bezel, your door panels, your grill, all that kind of stuff. So there is literature out there to help you, but it is kind of a bear. All right, so the next thing that, again, that started with square body trucks was this was the beginning of GM's era of plastics. And so now you get all your trim pieces, your A pillar, B pillar, C pillar trim, your door panels, your gauge bezel, everything is made of plastic and no longer made of metal when you get to square body trucks. And so when you're looking at some of these older trucks, most of the time your plastic is gonna be brittle, it's gonna be broken, it's gonna be worn out, it's gonna be repainted. I will tell you right now, if you're gonna buy one of these trucks, just look into how to do ABS plastic slurry and buy yourself a plastic welder You'll save yourself a ton of time if you know how to do that and how to fix your plastics, but it kind of does suck. And I am a fan of original plastics. If you can, if you can keep them and restore them or refurbish them, you'll be much happier than if you try and buy new reproduction stuff because it feels like reproduction plastics, the molds aren't quite as good. So just something to be aware of though, that, that these plastics are, are aging very quickly and no longer in nearly as good a shape. But again, continue with that kind of that, that things are starting to get complicated in this area, area of trucks. You're getting things like power windows, which seem like a huge plus you're thinking man i got power windows but this is the first iteration of factory power windows that we're seeing in gm trucks and so if they work when you buy it great um, but something to definitely check check that your check that your windows work before you buy a square body truck check that your windows go up and down because if they don't it is kind of a bear to change them to change out the window motors it's not very easy to do it's not a very easy job stuff like now you have you know, cruise control, which may or may not work. It's on your column. You've got, you know, your your bright switch and, and everything is, in, and your wiper switch is incorporated into your column as well. And stuff that's tech, you know, typically in a classic, very easy to pull out and change and swap in 20, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And a square body Chevy won't be the same. Stuff like a wiper switch won't be quite as easy to just change out as it was in older trucks. So again, something to, 
something to keep in mind there that it's all doable and I, don't, I wouldn't want to scare away a first time classic vehicle buyer. I would just tell you, it's not going to be quite as simple as, as an older truck. Uh, that's just one of those cons is you're getting into the 80s and 90s and they're starting to modernize some of this technology and these electronics. You're going to start to fight this kind of stuff. All right, another con to be aware of here, especially on, this is only for Blazers and uh, Suburbans that we're going to talk about. Our Suburban has barn doors and they're very cool. But I will say the the the, the trunk door, the, the, the type with the roll-up window, the power roll-up window, or the hand cranking roll-up window, and the barn doors, they're all finicky. So when you're looking at, if you're looking at a Blazer or a Suburban, open the rear door, see how they open. These are okay. They're not the best. They're okay, but you still have to kind of lift and pull and pop, and then they'll open up just fine. Um, but our Blazer that we gave away earlier this year, we swapped the electric regulator out for a manual regulator in the wind, in the rear window, the, the window that went up and down. And you know, they just kind of suck. And I don't know which one sucks worse, but I will tell you, before you buy a vehicle, open and shut the tailgate and see how it does. If it's an absolute nightmare and you're looking at other trucks close by, you know, that might be a deciding factor for you uh, because we did a ton of work to our tailgate to try and get it to shut right. And it shut decently, but the window never really, really went all the way up into the window felt, stuff like that. So it's just something to be aware of that, that it feels like Chevy kind of ran out of attention span when it came to the rear doors in their vehicles. So just another thing. And then on to the last con. Part of the square body is the fact that it has square fenders. So big square fender openings, not round fender openings like most trucks. And the reason why, in my opinion, this is a con is that this truck is on 37s. And we have all this gap in our fender because the fender is square. If the fender was round, we could have ran a maybe four inch or six inch lift to clear 37 inch tires. But to clear 37s, this truck needs 10 inches of lift, which means 10 inches of extra body roll. You're up that much higher. You know, you're, you're tight in parking garages, all that kind of stuff, just to fit 37s underneath it. A 10 inch lift on maybe a Ford pickup would be enough to clear 40s. So again, this is a con, in my opinion, is the square fenders. They look cool, they do, and they fit the square body style of the truck, but it is a kind of a bear because you gotta lift it so high to clear any sort of a tire. But I think that's it. I think in terms of cons, I think that's it. There's the, the cons list isn't very long. The pros list is super long. These trucks, the pros way outweigh the cons of these trucks. It's just good to be aware of the negative aspects of owning a square body Chevy. But once you know, there's so much good that goes on in these trucks. They're so phenomenal. They've got plenty, plenty of character when you're driving them down the road. People love seeing them. But again, they're readily available. And and, and again, I'll say it, it, it is the perfect truck for your first starter classic. I think anybody with a catalog can figure out how to do these and, 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 and some hand tools, really. So I ho hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was informational for you. I hope that you get a good look at what the Suburban looks like. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube. Check us out on our website, again, hotsimmotors.com to see what else we're giving away. If you're seeing this before December 11th at midnight, we're still giving this truck away and you can get in to win it. But if not, get in on whatever else we're giving away. So again, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it and we'll check out the next one.